be available later on today, and it'll be up for a couple of days anyway. Um, if you are taking notes and uh, you want to have a shortcut, I'll go ahead and give it to you. Uh, up in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, there should be a, um, a camera icon. And if you click that icon, it will save a, a still photo or a, you know, a screen capture of uh, whatever I'm showing. Okay, and it will save it to your desktop, and it will number it so that uh, if you do that several times, you'll, you'll be able to see them in sequence. Okay, so if you want to have a little hack there for, for taking notes, there it is. Um, okay, so guys, my name is Kurt Frankenberg. Uh, they call me the champion of married puts, and I, uh, I, I, I take that uh, title champion not to mean that I've won any kind of competition. Uh, if there even is such a thing for, for Mary Put trading. Uh, but uh, a champion is somebody that, that uh, champions the cause of another, somebody that uh, speaks for or speaks on behalf of uh, something that they believe in. And uh, I've been speaking for Mary Puts as a strategy to leave your upside open while at the same time uh, keeping your downside protected uh, for years, for, for more than a decade now. And over that time, we've had the opportunity to learn 12 different ways to take income out of a married put trade. And, uh, you know, one of them, of course, would be the, the tired old uh, <laughs> mothballs covered uh, strategy of covered calls trading. Uh, but uh, we call that income method number one. But there's 12 income methods, and I'm going to show one of them to you today. Uh, that's pretty exciting, and it's been working very well for some of our subscribers. Um, I've been uh, looking over the shoulder of a couple of uh, uh, Fusion members and uh, kind of guiding them in their uh, their learning of Income Method Number Five. And, and uh, perhaps later this month, uh, we'll have a webinar uh, showing the successful results of a um, of a current uh, Income Method Number Five trade. Okay, so having said all that, uh, you probably are we're settling in right now. It's uh, three minutes in here. Uh, what I'm going to be doing today is giving you the most important key to trading in 2015 and, you know, honestly, always. And uh, we're going to identify the problem that normally goes along with uh, trading. Uh, we're going to identify why it hasn't been solved yet. And we're going to see what's possible and what's different now. And finally, uh, I'll give you some steps to take next uh, if indeed you, uh, uh, at the end of this uh, show today, uh, if indeed you figure out that, man, you know, this is maybe something I want to try. Uh, I'll give you some steps to proceed, okay? All right. Now, whenever I'm doing, uh, gosh, sometimes I'll attend webinars too, just like you are here. And, and whenever I'm uh, about 10 or 15 minutes in, <laughs> I've, I've uh, either answered this question for myself uh, or I've left. Okay, and so I'm going to ask you to ask yourself this question. Let's save yourself some time, okay? Is this for me? Is this for me? Um, well, the, the, uh, the uh, presentation today, the class today, is going to teach you how to protect yourself from loss. It's going to teach you how to take income from stocks uh, with another way uh, that's uh, much more, has much more potential uh, than, for example, the trading cover calls method. Okay, uh, how to participate in growth, you know, how to have uh, uh, unlimited upside. And we are going to show you how to essentially bulletproof your stock and no longer have risk. Now, I'm not going to make the claim that you can do that from the front end, but uh, think about it. If you collect enough premium to offset the cost basis of your stock, why then uh, you no longer have any capital at risk. And I'm going to show you how it's possible to do that a lot more quickly than you might imagine, okay? So bulletproofing stock so that you no longer have risk but you still have upside potential. If, if uh, any of these four um, points appeal to you, then uh, today's class is for you, okay? All right. Now, uh, I'll be showing something that I call the radioactive profit machine, and it's, it's a very um, particular way to set up a Mary Put. It's, it's against tradition. It's against the way that a uh, Mary Put would normally be set up. Okay, and so we call it a uh, radioactive profit machine. It's a unique variation of the traditional Mary Put play, and allows for income. Today, I'm going to be showing one of the twelve income methods that can be used with an RPN. I'll be showing income method number five, which we have nicknamed the money net. It's called that because it's a riskless spread trade that uh, creates income on the front end and. Um, 
it, uh, it can be done in such a way that it doesn't limit your upside growth potential. A little bit more about that later. So this webinar is going to introduce you to a new and better way to trade, to cut your loser short, let winners run, and potentially get paid while doing it. All right, so uh, during today's uh, class, I'm going to uh, very, very often, I'm going to just pop in and give you a poll here. And uh, I'm going to do one right this second. I want to uh, reach out to you and, and have some participation. Uh, I'm going to be asking you questions. You're going to be asking me questions. Um, <laughs> we've got uh, several dozen people in the room. I think we've got over 60 people in the room right now and many more that have registered that uh, uh, are, are looking for the recording later on. But uh, uh, this is a live class. It is February 10th, 2015. It's about seven minutes after noon on the East Coast. <clears throat> and uh, so you can and ask me questions live. Now, if your question uh, stays there for a little while and I haven't answered it yet, I'm going to ask you to please uh, uh, exercise patience with me because I'm, I'm uh, flying it solo today. I'm doing this by my lonesome. Uh, normally I'm doing by my good friend Mike Chepka, but uh, uh, he's going to be a little busy today. So, Okay, thanks for, uh, we've already had 53% of the room uh, respond to the poll. Um, I'm going to ask you all, and by the way, you can answer in more than one category. So this uh, poll, the, the total answers are going to be more than 100%, aren't they? Okay, you can answer in more than one category. Okay, let me leave that up for about another five seconds. Three, two, one, close. All right. A lot of folks answered. Uh, I know that some of you are just calling in, or you might be behind a firewall or whatever that prevents you uh, from participating, but, uh, but a lot of you, most of you participate, so thank you. 28% of those who participate say I'm a power option subscriber. Well, I'd like that number to be 100%, and uh, not just because uh, I really like the power options people, but because I know that it's the best thing for you, okay? So uh, when it comes to uh, finding trades, managing trades afterwards, tracking them, and uh, even altering trades, uh, the power options platform is what I use, and I've been using ever since I discovered it. Okay, and now my subscription is free. Okay, because I, I partner with them on a lot of things, but uh, uh, but it's it, it's worth every bit what I was spending before, which is uh, oh gosh, I think it was fifty nine dollars. I think now they're up to ooh sixty dollars. <laughs> uh, so anyway, let's see. Twenty two percent. This is my first radioactive trading webinar. Welcome. Uh, I think you're going to really get something out of it. And in fact, uh, uh, we're going to find out here by the way of our polls. Uh, you know, if you're getting something out of it, I think you will. 58% have been to other radioactive trading webinars, and you're back because you're learning. So, uh, okay, well, a uh, good portion of the room is what I call repeat offenders. <laughs> good to see you again. And uh, uh, so, uh, you know, if, if you're in that second category, your first radioactive trading webinar, maybe soon uh, you'll be in the third category. You'll, you'll say I'm back because I'm learning. 14% of the room are thinking about buying the blueprint. The blueprint, just to fast track it to you, okay, I'm, I'm going to let you know that at the end of today's class, I'll be giving you an opportunity to, to uh, pick up a product. And that's, uh, <clears throat> that's uh, quite frankly, why I'm able to do these webinars for free. But understand this, today's class, and, and really every class that we do, is 97% content. Okay, it's 97% uh, education, and it's only 3% promotion. And the promotion is going to come at the end. And it won't be a surprise. I'm going to say, hey, look, you want to buy this? <laughs> I'm going to do that. All right, so, so just, just know that. All right, 25% say that they have recently bought the blueprints or the home study kit, and uh, uh, you're here to review things. So marvelous. Okay, this is great. All right, let me go ahead and, and uh, uh, introduce you. This isn't me. This is my friend Mike Chepka. And uh, Mike is one of the traders over at Power Options, and uh, more than one of the traders. He's, he's uh, the uh, director of options education. And, um, you know, earlier I, I said I posed this question, uh, or I, I, I told you that you should pose to yourself this question, is this for me? Okay. And then secondly, anytime that you're, you're, you're seeing a, a class like this or a presentation like this, you would say, uh, why should I listen to this guy? <laughs> so um, I'm going to tell you that uh, uh, the system that I'm going to lay out for you is teachable. Okay, it's doable. It's it's not that good traders are born; uh, they are made. And uh, Mike here uh, had, had done very well under the tutelage and instruction of of Ernie Zarenner. Ernie Zarenner is the founder 
of uh, power options, and uh, he put that thing together oh nearly 20 years ago, I think, to, uh, for his own purposes. Uh, Ernie wanted to identify the best covered call trading opportunities in the market at the time. And uh, to this day, that's what he's most comfortable with, is, is doing uh, covered call trades, although he does them kind of my way now. Okay. So um, Mike, anyway, went to work for Power Options, and, uh, and of course I became a customer of Power Options back in 2007. Now Mike uh, had, had been doing all kinds of different trades because you know he's he's uh, responsible for teaching folks how to use the power options tools and there's 23 different ways or 23 different strategies supported there you know there's double diagonals and condors and uh, iron butterflies and, and of course cover calls and and uh, bull put spreads and bear call spreads and and you name it okay even married puts how about that <laughs> and I called in <coughs> saying hey you know I'd, I'd like to alter the uh, you know I'd like to customize the married put tool to look for my kind of married put. Mike looks at that and he says, I don't know. I understand what you're trying to do, but it looks to me like there's no way for you to really make money. You're going to really reduce your risk, but I don't see that you can really make money. I said, Oh, really? Well, uh, Mike, why don't you come and join me for a free webinar that I do? And, and the rest is history. You know, Mike introduced me to Ernie. Ernie starts trading radioactively. He's impressed. Um, and Mike starts trading radioactively. Now, here's the thing. Uh, up to this point, Mike had been doing things like cover calls and calendar calls, you know, where you buy a call far away in time and sell near term calls against it. He told me that that particular strategy made the most for him out of any strategy he'd tried up to that point. And also, it lost him more money than any other strategy that he had tried up to that point. And he said, you know, there, there's got to be a better way. And I told Mike, um, the, the key to trading is to get control of your losses. And he says, okay, and he became a lunatic about it. He, he became committed to this idea, and uh, it's a good thing because his first radioactive trade happened in April of 2008. And all of 2008, he was in... Uh, radioactive trades. Well, guess what? His account by the end of the year, and if you remember 2008, you know that it was a bad year for owning stock or selling covered calls. His account was down 1.5% from the beginning, from April of 2008 to the end of 2008. His account is down how much? 1.5%. Now, everybody else trading during that time, uh, that owned stock, that was long stock, was down you know, 40, 50%. Okay. Now, after that, after reigning in his losses, now Mike has got a year-over-year -year record of double-digit gains every year. Okay, so he became uh, very good at this thing. He had struggled with options before, uh, but got control of the losses side of things. Now he's got six years of year-over-year uh, -year double-digit gains: 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014. And uh, I think he's on track to do it again now in 2015. Okay, so well, rather than just bragging on Mike, okay, I just I just want to give you a little bit of credibility, let you know that the system can be taught. I want to ask, uh, <clears throat> what's the problem? What do you think the problem is? Go ahead and text in. I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, take a look here at your. Uh, uh, oh, good morning. <laughs> I'm looking at the questions now, and I see that Will has said good morning. Good morning, William. Good to see you. All right. Uh, what do you think the problem is with your trading? With your trading? Okay, we all have problems with our trading. Uh, uh, I'm going to ask you what uh, what describes your performance. And if you want to text in, I'm, I'm, I'm asking that question for those of you that are just listening in. Uh, I'm asking this question by way of uh, a poll here. Uh, and the question is, what statement best describes your trading over the last 12 months? your results. And uh, the five uh, answers are, number one, I picked more winners than losers and I made money. Uh, number two, I picked more losers than winners and lost money. <clears throat> and then I picked more winners than losers but still managed to lose. These, these folks uh, would have uh, been right more often than wrong but still lost money. Why? Because uh, their losing trades lost them disproportionately, lost them more than their winning trades won them. Um, or are you part of that minority that has figured out how to, even if you pick more losers than winners, still manage to win? And then finally, I'm ready to quit just to stop the hemorrhaging. Now that poll's been up for 55 seconds. I'm going to close it right at a minute. 
which it is now. Okay, so if you didn't get to vote, uh, be a little quicker with the trigger finger there, folks. Let me go ahead and share this with everybody. This was only one statement was allowed. Only one uh, answer was allowed. So 29% said, I picked more winners and losers and made money. And then 39% said, I picked more losers than winners and lost money. 26% okay. I picked more winners and losers and still managed to lose. Not fun. But look at this minority. 3% said, I picked more losers than winners, but I still managed to win. Now that, my friends, that shows that that small percent of folks is not lucky. They're not lucky. They are doing something very uh, wise. Okay? And I don't mean that they're picking, <laughs> they're doing bad picks and that's what's wise. No. What's wise is that on their losers, they're losing less. Okay? And their winners, of course, are going to take care of themselves. But on their losers, they're losing less. Okay? Now, another 3% say, I'm ready to quit. Just stop the hemorrhaging. Not fun. Well, let's add up the, I guess it's only the first and the fourth uh, answers means that you won last year, okay? So the first answer was, I picked more winners and losers made money at 29%. And then, of course, uh, uh, number four on the list there, 3%, I picked more losers and winners and still managed to win. So these 32%, the 29 plus the 3, these 32% are the only, uh, only folks that made it last year. I'm going to say that some of the guys uh, in this category are lucky. Some of them uh, traded really wisely. And guys, uh, what, what I'm here to do is not point a finger and say, hey, you're not wise. My, what, what I'm supposed to do here is, is help you be more wise, okay? Because we all acknowledge that there's a problem, okay? Well, what is the problem? Let's talk about it. The problem is not making enough money when you're right, but much more importantly, losing too much when we're wrong. Losing too much when we're wrong is the, uh, you know, it, it's, it's what we call the Mark Gale. Okay, let me introduce you to the Mark Gale. Why hasn't the problem been solved yet? The problem hasn't been solved yet because we haven't gotten a hold of the math that underlies the big uh, uh, problem. Okay, the math that underlies it is something called the Martingale principle. And once we understand how most people lose in the market, we're going to figure out how to not be one of them. <laughs> we're going to figure out how to win. Okay. Now, uh, the Martingale principle goes like this. It's also called gambler's ruin. Um, the plan of attack is simple. Each loss creates an even more desperate move to regain lost ground. All right, and I've personified the martingale. For those of you that are just listening in, uh, I've got a green scaly monster with dollar bills for scales. Okay, and he's just devouring money. And uh, the way that this fellow works is is uh, nefarious. All right, say that you begin with ten thousand dollars and you suffer a twenty percent loss. A lot of folks would think, well, okay, I'm down twenty percent. Now what I need to do is find a trade that will bring me back up twenty twenty uh, percent. But that won't do the trick. You see, a 20% gain will not bring you to break even. If you had 10000 and you lost 20%, 20% of $10,000, it's $2,000. So now what you have is eight grand. Well, if you take that eight grand and you make a 20% gain on it, that'll only be 1600 So lose 20%, gain 20%, you'll be at 9600 Okay, you're down 4%. Isn't that something? And, and it works the other way as well. Okay, for example, if you uh, made 20% on your first trade and then lost 20% on your second trade, then you'd be down 4%. <laughs> okay, it's not cool, right? Now, here's how the Martingale works. The Martingale uh, tempts us to bet larger and larger amounts of our stake in order to get back to where we started. So if we lose 20%, we need to... Uh, have a gain of 25% to get back to where we started. Okay, so again, you don't need a 20% gain to offset a 20% loss. You need a 25% gain. Well, this becomes a slippery slope because a 25% loss needs a 33% gain. A 33% loss needs a 50% gain to get back to where you started. Now think about it. If you had a 50% loss, if you lost half your money, what you need to do next is double your money or 100% gain just to get back to where you started. Now, this graph looks like this. We've got arithmetically increasing losses, but we've got geometrically or exponentially increasing amounts that we have to 
regained. Okay, and so it gets really, really difficult. It's what we call a slippery slope. All right. Now, the one thing that's uh, kind of cool to know, though, now that we know what the problem is, we can also figure out how to not be part of that problem. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to go back one. Oops. There we are. Okay. So uh, let's ask this question. Okay. If a 50% loss requires a 100% gain to get back to break even, what does a 5% loss mean? Well, you might just divide by 10 and say, okay, 50% loss, 100% uh, gain. You might divide by 5 and say, okay, 5% loss, 10% gain. But that's not how it is. The 5% loss only requires a 5.26% gain to, break, to bring you back to where you started, okay? And uh, uh, the fact is, is if we can keep our losses down in this, this zone, if we can keep our losses down to single-digit percent every time, it's going to mean a lot to us, okay? All right, now, I'm going to pose a question to you, and I, I want you to think it through, okay? And I think I've got a, do I have a, yes, I do, okay. Say you lose 50% every time that you lose, all right? But you make 100% every time that you win, and you win half the time or less than half the time. Is it possible for you to win this game? Let me go ahead and put that out there for, for you math guys and gals, okay? Because I've already presented to you the problem. I already presented to you the Martin deal, all right? And I said, hey, uh, you know, <laughs> if you have a 50% loss, all you need is a 100% gain to get back to where you started. <laughs> but what if you lose more often than you win? How is that going to work out? Can you possibly win with this game? Can you possibly win with this game? All right. Now we're, we've got uh, pretty overwhelming. Nobody seems to be touching the middle. Nobody seems to be touching the middle. We've, we've got an overwhelming uh, difference between the, the top and the bottom. I won't tell you which way it's going. Oh, now some folks are voting in the middle. Okay. Very good. So we've got representatives in all three answers. Okay. I want you to think this through. Okay. And the reason we're doing this, this may seem academic to you. This may seem like, well, this is, you know, gosh, this is a math class. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, one of the reasons that, that people don't do well trading is that they don't understand the mathematics that goes along with trading that you can't ignore. All right, so I'm going to leave this for about another ooh, three seconds, two seconds, one second, and close. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close it. Now, I'm going to share the results. 43%, <clears throat> the majority, okay, not the majority, but... Uh, uh, the largest uh, number here, 43% saying, no, can't be done. The 50% losses are going to offset the 100% gains, and so the losses outnumber the wins, and so it can't be done. Okay. Now, the, the second results, yes, but highly unlikely. The 60% probability of a loss stacks the deck. It stacks the deck against you, doesn't it? Okay. All right, and then finally, 30% say, yeah, there's a way to about guarantee it over the long haul, and I'll bet you some of you guys know the trick and some of you don't. Some of you just said, hey, I, I get it. This is a trick question. Let me go ahead and answer that one. All right, so folks, I'm going to show you the math, okay? Uh, what I've done is taking you to radioactivetrain.com. On radioactivetrain.com on the resources page, you can click there and then go about halfway down and then you'll click again and you'll find the trade simulator tool, okay? Now, the trade simulator tool, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to plug in some parameters here we're going to find out what really happens in a, a kind of a random uh, setting here. A target return of 100% and then a loss limit of 50%. But it happens, we lose 60% of the time. Or I should say 60% of the time. It's a 60% probability of a loss. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to run the simulation. And what will happen is once we dip below $250, we're going to uh, be bankrupt. Okay. So it started with $10,000 and ended up with dipping below. Okay, so let's try it again. Uh, bankrupt after 12 trades. Let's try this again. Uh, bankrupt after 18 trades. All right, let's try it again. Oh, geez, it took 34 trades this time. And look at this. What an emotional roller coaster. It took her $10,000 and we rolled it up at one point to 160000 but still ended up bankrupt. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change one thing here. You ready? I'm going to only change the amount that we bet, 
the amount that we bet, and I'm going to make it a percentage of our pot. Okay, so if we have ten thousand dollars to start with, we're going to only bet a thousand dollars on the first play, and if we win, of course, that's going to be a thousand dollars doubled. We're going to win a thousand dollars, so now it'll be up to eleven grand. Okay, and then we'll bet you know uh, one thousand one hundred on the next play and so forth. So let's see how this affects things. Look at that. Exactly what I said happened. We uh, the first win won us a uh, thousand bucks, now we're at eleven, and then we had three losses in a row. Oh my god. And then we had a win and then some more losses. Look at this. We had sixty losses, forty wins. And yet took the ten thousand dollars and doubled it. Interesting. See we're losing more often than we're winning. But because we've mastered our position sizing, this time we lost even more often. Because we've mastered our position sizing, now we're making money. Isn't that something? Most of the time, we're going to do it, okay? And so uh, this is what I wanted you all to see. I think it's kind of important uh, for us to understand the math behind it, okay? So uh, if, if, uh, if you bet your whole pot every time and you lose more often than you win, of course you're going to go bankrupt. But if you were to scale this down by 10 so that instead of losing 50 and making 100%, you lose only 5%, make only 10%, now we're talking. You could actually be playing the same stocks and compound your winnings quicker. Now, folks, uh, think about the truth of this, okay? I asked you your performance, right? And we see that 39% uh, picked more losers than winners and uh, ended up losing. And 26% picked more winners than losers but still managed to lose. The only reason that that could happen is that the, win the, the, I'm sorry, the losing trades were too big. They were so big that they outscaled the winning trade, even though there's a majority of winning trades, right? But they did have a minority that figured this out, figured out how, even if they picked losers more often than winners, how to still make money. Okay, so this is possible. Not only possible, it's uh, it's it's something that you're going to have to master. It's called skew, and mastering skew is the first goal to trading successfully. You need to skew yourself, or you will screw yourself. In order to slay the martingale, we've got to pay attention to our losses. Okay? So, okay, Kurt, you're not telling me anything I don't already know. Well, maybe I am. I mean, I, I, I told you something that uh, probably was uh, a little surprising, that you could actually lose more often than win so many months. So, what's the practical on this? How do we accomplish this? What's possible? Well, here's an overview of how we do things here at Radioactive Trading. If you've got a stock, let's say that this is your cost basis for your stock, okay? It could go up or down, all right? Um, what a lot of folks will do to hedge that, to try and skew this, is that they will try to uh, collect a premium. A popular solution is covered calls, okay? And the problem is you only get a small amount. You may need to deliver your stock at a low preset price. So here's the deal. Here's your cost basis for your stock. Okay. And here's where it could go, down or up. All right, and what you're going to do is you're going to lower the cost basis by accepting a small premium. So now the cost basis is lower. And instead of that stock potentially being able to go down to zero, we're going to redraw the line. And now it can go down to like three points over zero. <laughs> well, it's still kind of ouch, and it's still kind of no good. And what's the price that we pay for this? Well, what we do is we cap our upside. Now, I'm going to say a uh, common saying to you. You're probably going to, uh, you know, you're probably going to be able to finish the sentence before I do. Okay, it goes like this. Cut your loser short and what's the rest of it? Some folks are texting them. <laughs> let winners run. Cut your loser short, let your winners run. Okay, but what are we not doing? We're not allowing our winners to run. In fact, I would say that we're... Uh, allowing our losers to run, and we're cutting our winners short. That's backwards. Okay? So here's what the radioactive profit machine is all about. I'm going to show it to you graphically, and then I'm going to show it to you practically, how we assemble it, how we put it together. Here at the bottom left is where the stock could go, theoretically, zero. In the upper right, the stock could go, well, really, it could go to the moon. Okay? But the point is, instead of lowering our cost basis by taking a premium for selling cover call, rather than that, what we're going to do is we're going to buy stock insurance. And that's boring. It's nowhere near as sexy 
as sitting on the stock and taking uh, taking a premium. And a lot of you fell for, just like I did, you know, back in the 90s, I, I fell for this uh, monthly income from cover calls uh, rigmarole, okay? Uh, <laughs> I've, I've, I've given up giving polls about it. I mean, uh, almost nobody that does cover calls uh, does well with it consistently. Almost nobody does well with it consistently, okay? But here's what we're going to do. This isn't sexy, but what we're going to do is we're going to actually raise the cost basis. Instead of paying, you know, fifty dollars for our stock, we might end up paying fifty-eight dollars for our stock plus a fifty-five dollar put. Okay. Now here's the deal. When we do that, we limit how much we can possibly lose, but we still do leave our upside completely open. That's what's exciting about the radioactive profit machine. Now, here's the deal. Every stock has its own volatility signature. Okay, uh, it could go up by uh, fifteen percent, say, and it could go down by fifteen percent. All right. Now, by by doing the stock insurance thing, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, rein in the detrimental effects, but we're going to leave the positive effects of the volatility. All right. So here we are with our cost basis for our stock, and and uh, and our put option, and then what happens is we um, are going to take away this. Uh, we're going to take away some of our potential, but we're also going to take away almost all of our loss potential. Okay, so uh, for example, uh, our 15% that we could make, if we're spending on a put option, you know, 5%, then uh, when the stock goes up 15%, all we're going to make is 10. All oh, poor baby. Okay. On the other hand, when the stock falls by 15%, all we're going to lose is five. And so what we've done here is we've made it so that we can. Um, Lose nickels when we're wrong, but make dimes when we're right, and that's uh, that's honestly kind of the the long and short of it. <laughs> long and short, not to make a, a trader's joke, okay? But that is the that is the long and short. Of it, okay. Now, what we're going to do is uh, take you into an actual trade. But just before I do, I'm going to uh, poke into the questions here and see if anybody's posing any questions. Nope. Okay. So far, everybody's wrapped with attention, right? Hey, thank you. We've got 81 of you in the room, and I appreciate that. 81 of you, and we've been having great participation on the polls. Okay, so here's the practical. I'm going to show you a, a trade here. And we have more recent trades. It's just that, man, you know, uh, doing these slides and so forth, it takes me a while to put together one of these uh, programs, you know, the 60 or 80 slides done. Okay, so so I'm using older examples, and if you want to uh, follow along with current examples, maybe even live examples, uh, you'll want to get a fusion membership. Look over Mike's shoulder and see how he's making his double-digit year-over-year gains. You look over Ernie's shoulder and see how he's, in some cases, doing better. And uh, anyway, here's what he did. He bought, this is uh, about this time last year, or you know, March time frame last year, he bought in uh, at a price of $49.45. Okay? Now, simultaneously, he's buying a, Jan now this is January 2015, okay, this is just recently expired. He's buying uh, 10 months away a put option that's also in the money, okay, and it's, it looks expensive. But watch how this plays out. What happens is he's got a, a $58.95 invested amount. And of that fifty-eight ninety-five, he's guaranteed for ten months to be able to pull fifty-five dollars out of it. So really, all that's at risk is three dollars and ninety-five cents. Okay? Now, first of all, you saw earlier where introducing position sizing was the only difference in the record, in the trading record. Right? We 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 popped up the uh, you know betting. Uh, you know, making 100%, losing 50%. Okay, and this this is uh, pretty much the same thing, where you could make oh say uh, you could lose say 50% of this amount, and you could make 100% of this amount. All right, and then everything else is uh, kind of on deposit, and that's what is perfect about the radioactive profit machine because if you're already accustomed to owning stock. This uh, shows you how to um, scale your stock into a radioactive profit machine, to scale it into something that does not risk too much of your capital. Okay. All right, so it's 6.7% of your capital at risk, but 
think about it. Um, the only way I lose a whole three dollars and ninety-five cents is if I hold all the way till expiration. That's this blue line. If I hold all the way till expiration, I might get out before then. Halfway to expiration is this red line. Okay, so I might get so I'll lose less uh, if I get out early, and I'll make more if I get out early. All right. All right, so what we're doing here is is we're uh, actually kind of wagering this uh, 395. We could lose as much as 395, okay? But it's very unlikely that we're going to lose that much. On the other hand, we could end up doing very well. Now, questions just started uh, poking in, and I am going to address the question, but I want to talk about this out of uh, in the money put option, okay? You'd think that buying a far away in the money put would be expensive, but it's not. Okay, and the reason is what we're doing is we're doing the best deal possible on our time value. Time value falls off slowly at first, and if your intent is to only hold for a month, is there any reason why Mike couldn't buy a put option that's ten months away and then sell it when it's still got nine months to go? Yeah, of course he could do that. All right, um, he's not he's not obligated to hold for the whole ten months. In this example here, we're seeing how uh, like a four month away put option uh, comes down slowly, right, over the first thirty days. But in the final thirty days, the time value falls off tremendously. It falls off very very quickly. Okay. Now uh, another thing is, folks will will say, well, geez, you know, it's it's really cheaper to go out of the month. Well, is it? You know, you may as well use a stop order. And stop order is, is uh, pretty unreliable. <laughs> it's very unreliable. But uh, the thing is, buying an in-the-money put option and making sure that you buy it far away in time um, actually uh, introduces some really interesting behaviors that make the 12 different income methods that go with the radioactive profit machine possible. Okay, there's 12 different income methods. Some of the income methods, three of them, uh, deal with manipulating the puts, and there's no short calls at all. Kind of exciting. Okay, now here's the deal. I would like for you to just take a moment because remember, I told you at the beginning of this program, if you join me late, I'll go ahead and reiterate. Okay, Mike looked at my radioactive profit machine. Mike, Mike Chuck, the director of power options, uh, the uh, director of options education over at power options, he looked at my in the money, far away in time, Mary put play. And he says, ah, I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to keep your risk down to single digit percent. Like, gosh, Kurt, I don't see how you could possibly make any money with this. And again, I, I told him, man, just wait. <laughs> but before you reject this out of hand, I want you to just think about only the protective side. I'm going to show you the income methods. Okay, and you're going to be excited by that. But I just want you to think about the, uh, the protective side to confirm the truth of what I'm saying. You think back to your record. And would the radioactive profit machine change it? For example, if you had the same ticks and the same timing last year, and your uh, losses were never greater than 5% of whatever you had in any particular trade, and yet you were allowed to uh, allow your winners to run, okay? but you had no losses greater, greater than 5%, would it have made a difference? Let me go ahead and ask that as a poll. Okay? And, uh, I see that question, and I will do it. Okay, so think about what I just showed you. If every loss you took last year was scaled down to five percent or less, would you have done better? Okay, and then I've got a uh, question here from Ray, and I'll hit that question. I've got a question here from Daryl also, and I'll hit that question. Okay, but I'm asking a question of the entire audience, including Ray and Daryl. Uh, go ahead and answer that. Just think about it. Now, I realize that some of you applied this last year. Some of you owned the blueprints, and we also saw that 3% of the room, 3% of the room said that uh, they lost more often than they won in their trades last year and still managed to make money. They lost more often than they won, but they didn't lose more than they won. Make sense? Okay. So let me leave that put, uh, poll up there for another, oh, 10 seconds, okay? So far, no takers. Oh, well, we finally did have somebody jump in there and say, nah, it wouldn't help. <laughs> I knew there would be somebody. Okay, let me go ahead and close that poll. I'm going to share the results. And bam. Okay, so we have a tiny minority of folks saying, no, 
uh, limiting my risk to 5% wouldn't have helped my trading. And I'm going to say that probably that means that they already limited their risk to 5%. Okay, I could be wrong. And please text in if, if I am wrong. But, uh, but if, 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 uh, if what I shared would not help you, I'm going to say that you're probably day trading. You're probably day trading or swing trading. You're probably not doing the types of trades that can see double-digit swings to the upside. Okay. And uh, uh, that is another important ingredient of the radioactive profit machine. Okay, now 29% said, that it, here's the deal, 5% of the room said no. 95% of the room then is saying yes. I may have lost last year, but I would not have lost as much. 10% says yes, uh, that would have helped. I would be ahead by as much as $500. 29% said yes, I would have done between 500 and uh, nearly 5,000 better. And 29% said my savings or winnings would be at least $5,000 better than they were. Wow, very cool. Okay, very cool. Now, I've got a couple of questions from Daryl and Ray. I'm going to answer those, and then I'm going to show you something cool. <laughs> You're going to dig it, I promise. Okay, so Daryl says, how do you select your put value and time to expiration? Daryl, that is uh, explained in great detail in my book, The Blueprint. But I will say this. Uh, I want to keep my uh, total risk between about 5 and 8%. And I want uh, to buy a, a put option that's at least 150 days away from expiration. Okay, so right now it's February 10th. I would buy March, April, May, June. I would buy July expiration or after. Okay, perhaps January expiration next year or something like that. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> so that's a good question, Daryl. Ray says, when does the 395 at risk become a realized loss? Ray, not until... Uh, 10 months away. I mean, that, that was uh, something that Mike picked up in March of last year, and it was the January put, so he has 10 months expiration. If he fell asleep at the wheel, made no adjustments, and the stock went down, if all three of those uh, uh, conditions were in place, then he would lose the 395. Okay, let me repeat that. If he made no adjustments, if he fell asleep at the wheel and did not close the position, and if the stock went down, then if all three of those conditions were in place, then he'd lose 395. Now, the thing is, he can close the position before uh, expiration, so and lose less. He can make adjustments, and in fact, he did. He made himself bulletproof. I'll show you that in a moment. Okay, And uh, the stock may go up or may go down, but uh, uh, of those three conditions, Mike is in control of two of those three conditions. So that that kind of puts things in his favor, doesn't it? Okay. Uh, Drexel says, in my experience, limiting loss by five percent with a married put makes the cost of the stock or put too much to overcome. Okay. Well, Drexel, I've been doing this since uh, uh, two thousand, since uh, uh, two thousand, the year two thousand, and. Um, uh, so my experience is a little bit bigger, <laughs> but I'm, I'm not putting down your experience, okay? I'm just saying that uh, perhaps you haven't learned the 12 income methods, or uh, if you do own the blueprint, perhaps you may need uh, some uh, assistance on, on, uh, on the practicals, okay? And so uh, remember the Siegel model, if, if you have the blueprint. If you don't have the blueprint, it's, I mean, it's, it's obvious. You need to get it, all right? You, you do. Uh, but if you do have the blueprint and you're, and you're still not uh, winning, uh, use your support. It's support at uh, That is an email that I read, and I will help you. I'm, I'm helping a number of people right now in their trades. Okay. Uh, how many income methods can be used in an IRA, asked Leno? Most of them. And it depends on your, uh, what do you call, uh, it depends on your custodian. Okay, so for example, uh, Scott Trade may not allow you to do everything. Options Express and Thinkorswim will allow you to do just about everything. Uh, CE says, doesn't the value of protected put go down over time due to theta? Yes, but it goes down very slowly. That's what's exciting. The fact is, you buy a far away put option, and then you sell it while it's still far away. Hello. Okay, so uh, if you buy a near-term put option, 
slow, it, it, it falls off, that time decay falls off very markedly. But if you buy it far away in time and sell it while it's still far away in time, uh, then you overcome that problem. Okay, great question from CE. Okay, so folks, I'm going to go ahead and show you the exciting thing. I'm going to uh, close the questions here for a second. I mean, you go ahead and pose your question, all right, but I'm going to not be looking at them for a moment. I can only look at one thing at a time. Okay, so I'm going to look at my screen. So what's so different now? First, before we show you the income method that you came to see, I'm going to show you what's different. We've skewed our return. Okay, we've, or we've skewed what's called expectancy. Okay, the old trader's maxim of cut your losers short and let your winners run is actually being put to use by uh, taking that stock, right, and then reining in the possible losses but leaving the upside open. Now, uh, it is possible to make yourself bulletproof. We're going to show that in a moment. Okay, but first, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Mike. Mike, as you know from the beginning of uh, this uh, this class, I, I told you that he had had trouble with options, but it wasn't because he didn't understand options. It was because he didn't understand risk. He didn't understand the math behind the martingale. And once he figured that sucker out, <laughs> now he's doing very well. All right, so here's an example. Uh, Mike uh, picked SLW, Silver Wheat, a pretty volatile stock. Okay. But he used a put option. Actually, uh, he bought 300 shares and three put options and limited his risk down to single-digit percents. All right? Now, within the first month, he did something called uh, income method one. And then after that, he did a number of other income methods, uh, including something that we call the ATM machine. The ATM machine. The ATM machine requires you to deposit money before you can take any out, right? And hopefully, you're going to take out more money than you put in. That's the way interest works in a bank, and uh, it works a lot better <laughs> in the market. Mike ended up making 58.9%. And that's 58.9% not just on the SLW stock and not just on the SLW stock plus the put, but it was uh, 300 shares of SLW plus the three puts plus funds that he added afterwards with zero risk. And I know that sounds like a stretch, okay? But what that means is uh, he made an adjustment to his put options to where he could no longer lose, and yet, as the stock would fluctuate up or down, he was able to continue to add funds that would not be at risk and that would be included in the movement. And uh, anyway, he ended up making 58.9%, not just on the initial $6,400 that he put in, but on the several uh, uh, $1,000 that he put in afterwards also. So kind of cool. Now, to brag about a win like that doesn't make sense unless we also include the other side of the equation what about the losses. Okay, So in the same 12-month period where Mike made that 58.9% gain on SLW stock, he invested a similar amount of capital in Talisman Energy. Now, uh, Talisman Energy stock, I, it shouldn't say position there, it should say stock. The stock lost over 50%, but Mike's loss was only 4.5%. Again, because of uh, putting in the put option and also applying one of the income methods. So when he got out, the amount of capital that he lost was 4.5% of the capital that he invested. That's it. Okay? And guess get this, this was his biggest loss of the year. Okay? Now, uh, before uh, a, a hit like that would have devastated Mike. Because think about it, you know, if he got into Talisman Energy and makes sixty percent on his money, let's say he, he puts ten thousand dollars into Talisman Energy. Let's make the math easy. And it's a 60% gain. Now he has $16,000. So he takes the $16,000 and puts that into uh, Talisman and loses 50% of it. Well, then now he's down to eight. So he started with $10,000, <laughs> has a 60% win, and then a 50% loss. But guess what? He's behind by 20%. Let's say that again. Let's do that math again. $10,000 invested in SLW goes up 60%, so now he has 16,000. Then 
It takes the 16,000, puts it into talisman energy, and loses half of it. Okay, so now he has $8,000. So he would have taken $10,000, and even having a great win, turned it into $8,000. That's what it would have been like before learning the radioactive profit machine. But because Mike knew the radioactive profit machine, he was taking 60 or you know 58.9 percent win on his winner, and taking a 4.5 percent loss on his loser. How about that? Okay, now I'm not going to promise that you're going to uh, uh, get a 58.9 percent gain. Okay, I'm not. That would be foolish. That'd be silly, and that would be you know dishonest, because I don't know what's going to happen in the market, and neither do you. If you want to get down to it, okay. But I will say that Mike did very well like this because he positioned himself on purpose. He positioned himself for this kind of gain both times. He got the gain here, and he got a loss there. But shoot, you know, <laughs> if you have 50% losses and 100% wins, you never get ahead. But if you have 4.5% losses and 58.9% wins, you do very well. Now, this equation here, which determines expectancy, goes like this, number of wins times the average win minus the number of losses times the average loss. Okay? Now neither one of these were average, right? But you can bring down the average by making your losses very, very low. And if uh, if this was his biggest loss, four and a half percent, then you know that the average loss was less than four and a half percent. Okay? The best way to make this whole equation do well is to control the part of the equation that you can control. That's the losses, okay? All right, so folks, we've still got a lot of you on the line. We've got, we got more. I don't know what happened. Now we have 88 of you on the line. Uh, Mike was able to uh, figure out how to slay the Mark deal, and so could you. But uh, that's not the important thing, okay? Oh, by the way, here's another, uh, just, just a snapshot that I took uh, earlier where uh, our target returns 100% and our loss limit is 50%, and we start with $10,000, and we lose more often than we win, right? Look at what happens. It's an emotional roller coaster. We took our ten thousand dollars, and at one point, what was up to eighty to eighty grand, but then ended up bankrupt. Okay. On the other hand, take a look at this. Here's another. It looks like the same record, but now, uh, well, it's similar. Now I'm only investing ten percent, or I'm only uh, putting at risk ten percent of the amount that I have in the trade. This simulates the um, uh, what we're doing with the radioactive profit machine, okay? You would put, uh, for example, $10,000 into a trade but only have 10% of it at risk, right? And then if uh, your stock goes up by only just a little bit, you make 100% based on what you risk, or you lose 50% based on what you risk. So look at this. We've got more losses than wins, and look at this tiny drawdown. Well, it was up to 34 grand, but then uh, ended up with you know, a little less than that, ended up with 28. Okay, and so that is uh, the idea. When we automate our position sizing by buying puts to go along with our stocks, when we automate the position sizing, we um, make it so that we could actually have a, a, an even worse losing record and still make money. Okay, this is important. Okay, but what else is different now? This is the exciting part. This is what you all signed up for. Okay, you wanted to see. Uh, a way to take income out of your stock that was like 80% better than a cover call. Well, here's here it is. Within the context of the RPM, the radioactive prospect machine, there's 12 different ways to generate income. I'm going to show you one of the ways that Mike used. Now, he used several, and he ended up bulletproofing himself, okay? But I'm going to show you just one of those things that he did. The radioactive trading income methods enhance the skew. Okay, and the way that it does that is it takes the cost basis for the stock and the put, and it lowers it. Okay, we take our stock basis for uh, I'm sorry, our cost basis for our stock and our put, and then we add uh, some income to the position. Now we've reduced our cost basis, but we still have the upside potential. That is what uh, enhancing the skew is all about. Okay, all right. So let's take a look. Here was the first income method that. Mike did. He did several, and he ended up doing very well with his positions. All right, double digit gains. All right, but uh, the first thing that he did was to uh, do the money net income method number five. He's sitting on a hundred shares of stock, and then sells to open two May fifty-five dollar calls at a dollar fifty apiece, generating three dollars. 
Now I know what you might be thinking. Uh oh, <laughs> one of those calls is naked, right? He sold two calls, and uh, he's only got 100 shares of stock, and uh, so he's got uh, 100 uh, shares, you know, that that are missing. He should he should have 200 shares, but he's going to sell two calls, right? Okay, but he didn't. But that's okay. And even in the restrictive account that uh, his uh, IRA uh, imposed, uh, they allowed him to do this because with the proceeds he also bought. Uh, a May 5250. Okay, so one of those May 5250s, or I'm sorry, one of those short uh, May 55s was covered by the May 5250, and the other uh, short May 55 call was covered by the 100 shares of stock that he owns already. Okay, so here's the deal: he takes in three dollars, and then using some of that three dollars, he buys the May 5250 call, and so he takes in a premium of 40 cents. Now, why would he do that? Well, he has 40 cents of premium received, but there's a problem normally uh, with the ratio call spread, and that is unlimited risk. Normally, right? Here's how it goes. If the stock stays below 52.50, he gets to keep his 40 cents. If the stock moves up, well, if it's at $55 a share, think about this, okay? Expiration Friday, CAR is at uh, $55 a share. So the 55s expire worthless, uh, but the 5250 is worth $2.50, and he's been paid to own it. How about that? Here's one of five ways that you could get paid a second time for doing the money now. Now, uh, the problem normally with the racial call spread, if you sell two calls and buy one and you're naked, that means as the stock goes up, you, you, your, your 5250 uh, pays for or, or you know it, it secures uh, one of these short 55s and, and you're going to make a little income there but then you've got to go out on the open market and buy the stock at a loss you know buy the stock at a high amount to deliver to low amount and so you have unlimited risk again normally what if you own the stock already oh if you own the stock already then what you get is a situation where hey, doing this racial call spread is going to definitely bring in 40 cents, and it might bring in more later, but it won't hurt me. In fact, if I get obligated to deliver this stock, well, Mike owns this stock at a lower cost base, 55. That's, he owns it at $49.45. So he actually has uh, uh, got no risk to do this racial call spread. Kind of cool. Now, here's what happened. When May expression came, all right, uh, he, he might have been expected to deliver CAR at $55 if it's trading higher than that. And, and what happened was on May expiration Friday, okay, on May expiration Friday, the stock was trading in the morning at around $54 change. Now, by that afternoon, by, uh, by the close of trading, it was $55.16. He would have had to part with his stock. He would have taken a profit, but he wanted to play it for some further gains. Okay, and so here's what happened. It's, May, uh, it's expiration Friday in May. Mike decides he wants to keep his car, his CAR stock, okay? And so uh, he unwinds the position. He's selling to close his May 52.50 call for $2.35 and simultaneously buying to close two May $55 calls, which are at 15 cents, okay? Because, uh, uh, you know, the stock is trading around 15. It's, it's below 15 when he did this. And it was, by the end of the day, it was $55.16. Uh, so anyway, he, he spends 30 cents. Now take a look at this. That's $2.05 credit received to close the position that he received 40 cents credit to open. <laughs> so he makes $2.45 total. Now remember, the original stock plus put position had $3.95 at risk. Well, this changed it to where now he's collected $2.45 in credit, so now he only has $1.50 at risk. And then uh, immediately uh, thereafter, he did another income method that uh, took away all the risk. So he still has unlimited upside potential, but no way to lose even if the stock crashes. That's exciting. That is what we call uh, bulletproofing. Okay. All right, now, I'm going to uh, throw up a poll there, and then I'm going to let you guys ask some questions here. So let me throw up a poll here, all right? Think of the income method 
What do you see in the income method that I just showed you? Okay. And uh, if you have questions, go ahead and start passing those in. And, uh, I'm going to take a look at the time. I want to make sure that we're pretty close. We're at the top of the hour. Uh, so I'd like to close up here pretty soon. If you want to stick around a little bit, I'm going to give you a little sales job. Okay, I'm going to tell you about the blueprint where you can get all 12 income methods. But right now, I'd just like a little bit of feedback from you. What do you think of the income method that I just showed you? Okay. All right. It's filling in very nicely. And you can, you can actually choose more than one of these if you like. Okay. All right. Let me give it three, two, one more second. If you haven't made your voice heard, make it now and click. Okay. Now, I know not everybody got a chance, but 7% uh, said that was wild. I didn't know you could do a riskless spread trade. Yeah. It's riskless because of the context in which it's done. And later on, you know, later on after Mike bulletproofed this, uh, the whole position is riskless. Okay, after bulletproofing, he's, he's uh, doing great. Okay, 33% said this one trade made it worth all the time we spent here today. Great, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Okay, 70% say I want to know more about riskless spread trades like this. I'll give you that opportunity here in just a moment. Um, there are 12 income methods that are associated with the radioactive profit machine, and uh, each one of them could be worth to you uh, more than what the blueprint costs. So uh, I'll go ahead and show that to you here in just a minute how you can get that. 15%, can I do what you just showed in an IRA? It depends on your custodian. Okay, Some uh, brokers will not allow it uh, in an IRA and some will. Is it legal? Yes, it's legal to do in an IRA. The, uh, the government will allow it. It depends on your custodian. You can roll over. For example, if you're in Scott Trade, Scott Trade would not allow this. Option Express would, Thinkorswim would, Interactive Brokers would, and so on. There's there's a pretty good list. Uh, Schwab, I think maybe not, right? But you can roll over your IRA into a, a, a custodian that will uh, allow you to do that trade. If not, if you don't want to do that, we do have a workaround. It's in the blueprint. There's a workaround that you can do it definitely fine with, and not have to change brokers. Okay, but uh, but that's a very good question. Okay, and forty-one percent say I especially like reducing the risk. Is it possible to make it go to zero? Yes, it is. Uh, I didn't show um, the other trades that Mike did to take away all of his risk, but he did. He bulletproofed himself so that going into uh, January of this year, uh, he was assured of making uh, a very good uh, return and uh, ended up uh, allowing it to run. So that's what we do. Cut losers short, let winners run. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and look at the questions here real quick. What? No kidding? No questions. Ha! Huh. All right. Well, i tell you what. Let, let's uh, take your attention back to the screen then. Um, and if you think of a question, go ahead and put it up there. And if you think of a question after we hang up, you know, go ahead and send it to me at, at um, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, support at radioactivetrading.com. Okay, a, a question did pop in. Let me go ahead and finish with this, Larry, okay? By doing a ratio call spread within the context of your radioactive profit machine, you can generate a credit, but without any of the capital risk that normally would go with a ratio call spread. Now, let's look at the difference, okay? Uh, if Mike had done, wait, wait a second, I'm not sure if I've got the numbers here, do I? Nope, I don't have the numbers, okay. <laughs> I'll go ahead and say the numbers. Or maybe I'll just rewind here. I'll rewind here. There we go. Okay. So Mike took two dollars and forty-five cents, right, for selling uh, the two May fifty-five calls and uh, buying one fifty-two fifty call. Uh, he got a forty cent credit at the beginning, and then uh, two dollars five cent credit later. So two dollars and forty-five cents. What if he had just sold one May cover call? That would be a buck fifty. Then of course he'd have to close it later on for the fifteen cents. So he would would have made it a one dollar and thirty five cent premium. Well, what is uh, two forty five premium versus one thirty five premium? It's a difference of almost double. Okay, eighty percent greater. Okay, so uh, he was able to collect enough premium to take away all of his risk after the second income method. All right, cool. So by applying the income methods to lower your cost basis or your risk or both, you may end up with a married put with all the time value paid for, but your upside left intact. We call that situation bulletproof and awesome. 
Now, quick reminder, you might not get all this in the first viewing, so I'm going to recommend that you uh, take a look at the video again um, uh, there on GreatDoctorTraining.com within the next couple of days. Also, uh, if you happen to own the blueprint or you buy the blueprint today, use your support. Right now I'm coaching uh, uh, a number of folks through their first uh, trades, and some of them are doing income method number five. Uh, and I'm very uh, optimistic about how those income method number fives are going to turn out. Uh, one fellow in particular is, is uh, out of his head. I mean, he's really excited because he's going to do so much better uh, than a covered call would. You know, it's, it's, it's just great. Okay, now I, I don't know what's going to happen to the market, but uh, I certainly know that he can't lose more than single digit percent. So that's that's exciting in itself. Okay, all right. So use your support. Uh, and uh, also, I wanted to give this away to everybody. I'm going to send a clickable link to folks that uh, are here live. Okay, so www.poweropt.com forward slash RAT for radioactive trading. Uh, I'm sending that to the entire audience. Boom. Okay, so there's a clickable link that I just sent you in the chat box. If you want to pick up two free weeks of power options, there's no credit card required, no obligation. Just uh, you, you get to have access to the best tools available for trading any kind of options plays. Now, the guys in the office they trade radioactively because they, you know, figured out the value of, of uh, you know keeping the risk down. All right, but uh, but if you happen to be a put spread kind of guy or a uh, you know, bear call spread kind of person, then uh, certainly uh, you're going to still want it, the best platform available. Okay, that's my little commercial for them. Okay, now, uh, with regard to the income methods, okay, the income methods reduce the gap <clears throat> so that your what you've paid for for your stock and your put becomes lower and lower. Okay, and uh, the phenomenon of bulletproofing is when we've done that enough times that now the uh, strike price of the put, okay, is uh, greater than what we've put into the stock and the put. And that's what we call bulletproofing. Well, I like to do a bulletproof offer. So for the blueprints, for the blueprints, uh, we actually guarantee the outcome. All right. So either it's going to help you, or we're going to buy it back. All right. Um, you probably already see the logic of using puts to keep yourself safe. And uh, I'm going to ask you, what do you think about you know the other 11 ways? <laughs> Would you like to know this? And if so, uh, I'll go ahead and show you what to do next after this primer on limiting risk and, and bulletproofing your stocks. Okay? I'll let that thing fill in for just a few seconds. I know maybe some more questions are coming through. What if you bought a put spread, says Larry? Uh, well, what if? Uh, uh, what are we talking about here? A bear put spread? Because that's done in a debit. We're talking about doing a bear put spread in the context of our RPM. Right? Okay, polls filling out right now, and I'm, I'm uh, open to fully answer Larry's question. Let's give that another five seconds. Three, two, one. Okay. Okay, so five percent of the room say I don't think puts can protect me, like you said. Well, you don't you don't actually have a problem with me. You have a problem with mathematics, all right? Uh, you have a problem with uh, with perhaps uh, the validity of of uh, whether or not a put is going to be honored. Okay, I guess I have uh, I understand that. If you think that man, uh, <laughs> uh, the stock market is not going to uh, you know the exchanges are not going to honor that put when I buy it, um, and Great. You shouldn't be investing at all. You know, don't invest at all if, if you're that distrustful of the whole process. But uh, as far as uh, whether or not uh, put option protects you the way that I showed, it's simply a matter of math. I did show uh, where you keep your risk down in single-digit amounts, and uh, uh, I'll ask you to review that again. All right. 18 percent say I don't know if it's worth it. Let's hear the offer. Okay. We'll give you the offer here in just a minute. 23 percent say Wow, this is just what I was looking for. You know. Uh, me too. <laughs> I wish I'd known this uh, back in the late 90s when I got hurt real bad. I, I got hurt by following the instructions of a covered call trading guru. He said to buy volatile stocks and make sure it's between five and twenty dollars a share, and then uh, uh, 
do it on margin, he said, and uh, you'll make, you know, 8-10% per month. And so I did for a while. And then I got hurt really badly, lost almost everything. If I had known this back then, wouldn't have gotten hurt, okay? Uh, and uh, 80% said, I've paid over three grand for a less complete solution. Yeah, uh, if you learn one income method, if you learn how to do um, covered calls, uh, this will teach you 12. Um, I thought it was very interesting. I looked and saw out there on the interwebs, I saw a uh, uh, program where they're selling what essentially is income method number 12. They were selling that idea. They were selling a course on that for $595. Uh, and so you can either get the video course for five ninety five, or you could do private lessons with uh, an investor type that uh, is experienced, and that was fifteen hundred dollars. You know, for five five uh, half hour lessons. <laughs> what? Holy cow! That's just one of the things that we offer. You know, it's, it's just income method twelve, and yet uh, I'm sorry, income method eleven. It's just income method number eleven, and uh, they're charging six hundred dollars for just the one. How about that? 91% say, I like bulletproofing, so guess what, so do I. Uh, here's what to do next, guys, and I'm going to wind this up in three minutes. We don't want to go more than a quarter past the hour, okay? Here's what to do next, okay? The next steps you need to take. Number one, take a look back at your own trading record and ask yourself, would keeping my losses down to 5% or less change my record? Even if I had the same picks, even if I had the same timing, but I never took a loss of greater than 5%. The answer to that is yes. If, if you would have had a better year, uh, then uh, you owe it to yourself to, to never have um, a losing year again. Okay? All right? Or, or if you do lose, you lose only 5%. <laughs> All right? Now, consider how different things might be if you also took income. The cover calls limit your upside because I just showed you a way to do uh, much better than cover calls. And uh, actually, three of the income methods um, don't, uh, don't limit your upside at all. Actually, more than three, uh, but uh, but they're done in a credit and don't limit your upside. It's kind of the same time. Were there any instances in which you could have gotten a better return if you didn't short a call? Well, if that's the case, boy, howdy, you know, uh, let's uh, let's get on this. Let's run the other eleven ways to take money out of the stock. Okay, number three, grab yourself a free trial to Power Options. That's uh, PowerUp.com forward slash RIT, and I sent a clickable link there, but it's on here live. Get two free weeks and try out their uh, all of their uh, strategies. Okay, what I mean is uh, try out the screen. You know, look. Don't don't actually execute all the strategies. <laughs> okay, but do but do check out Power Options. Um, that Power Options trial is uh, free. Just go to powerup.com forward slash rat. And uh, you can get set up uh, with uh, uh, with Mike Chapka. You know who who uh, you saw doing so very well with radioactive trades. Um, he can take you through setting up your uh, parameters to search for radioactive trades, or if you'd rather stick with plain vanilla cover calls or or uh, low put spreads, bear call spreads, and so forth, he can also show you how to do that. Okay. All right, but finally, here's the deal. If you think you do well to learn the other income methods, I was going to show two, but I just showed one. Okay, pick up the blueprint at radioactivetrading.com. Okay, now, uh, the blueprint has got uh, two, over 250 pages detailing step by step how to implement the radioactive trading strategies. There's uh, strategies to pull real cash out of a stock position. There's a special chapter on combining income methods. Um, there's several appendixes, including how to read charts and income method decision table. Um, it's pretty fabulous. And uh, what uh, what I wanted to leave you with is, hey, if <laughs> if this blueprint thing is so good, okay, and if, if we've sent it to 38 countries around the world so far, all right, if, if, if that's so, uh, then Kurt, by golly, you better be very confident about it, and, and we are. Here's the deal. Uh, if you're not 100% satisfied with the blueprint, it's just like if you were to buy an RPM, okay, a radioactive profit machine, out of, let's say you have $10,000 in the market, but only 3.5% risk. So you could only lose three to three fifty, three hundred fifty dollars, if the stock went completely against you. Well, what if we were to pay you that three fifty back? You know, what if? What if either the market pays it back to you, or we pay it back to you? Either way, uh, you have no risk as far as ownership of the blueprint. 
you buy the blueprints, uh, either it helps you, like I say it will, or you buy it back for you. Okay, so uh, I think uh, a book that talks about bulletproofing ought to have a bulletproof offer. So there's that. Okay, so uh, I'll go ahead and take uh, just a couple of questions if there are any, but uh, we're pretty much done here. Let's see, I've got a question from CE. What was the strike price of the put in your last example, and what was the cost of the put? Okay, so CE, uh, the strike price of the put in that example was also $55. And it was nine dollars and fifty cents was the uh, was the cost. Now that might seem expensive, but let's think about this. Um, it, he bought it when the stock was trading at less than fifty dollars a share, and so most of it is guaranteed back. Most of what he spent on that put option was guaranteed to come back. All right, uh, only three dollars ninety five cents of his entire invested amount of fifty ninety five was was at risk. So six point seven. Okay. Uh, Larry says, what if you bought a, a bear put spread ten wide? I I don't know why I would do that, Larry. I don't think I would want to do that. <clears throat> I think I uh, probably would not do that. That's the opposite of an income method, isn't it? <laughs> That's paying even more into the insurance. Okay, uh, no other questions it looks like, so I'm going to go ahead and close her up. Folks, I want to thank you for coming. Uh, you're welcome, William. Uh, you have a good day, too. Appreciate it. Um, I've got on the screen, I've got a testimonial from a fellow that uh, has bulletproofed most of his portfolio. And uh, what's exciting is that uh, he's been wrong more often than right, but he's making money. You know, six out of ten stocks cratered, and yet uh, uh, he was able to uh, he was able to uh, uh, make money, and that's uh, that's exciting. So, okay, folks, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close her up now. If you have questions that uh, we uh, missed, okay, or we didn't get to answer, then go ahead and send them to me at supportedradioactivetrade.com. Thank you. Good presentation, says Don. Thank you, Don. I appreciate you being here. Uh, John says, thanks again, Kurt. I may do Fusion in March when I return from a trip. Very good. Fusion is our monthly membership. Okay. All right. And I don't think anybody else is texting in, so <laughs> we'll go ahead and close it for now. Folks, thanks for coming. We'll see you out there. Bye for now, and happy trading.